Hello everybody, welcome to the second episode. In this video, I'm going to show you how to deal with control flow obfuscation in Emotet. The technique by which Emotet obfuscates the control flow is known as control flow flattening. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to de-obfuscate or recover the control flow back. So let's get down to the basics. We have a thing known as states. States are unique identifiers for specific basic blocks. These are the code blocks that get executed when a particular state is triggered. And these states are maintained by a variable known as state variable. Here's an example from Emotet where the state is represented by a register EX and corresponding basic block are shown. And there's a jump from the state to the basic block. Now let's summarize it all together. We have state variables, we have the main dispatcher from which the code gets dispatched and the sub dispatchers. So what are some of the steps that we need to take? All right, the first step that we need to take is we need to identify all the basic nodes then we need to associate nodes and respective states. And then finally, we need to identify all the sub dispatchers. It's the first step we need to take, right? For this, we will be using something known as symbolic execution. We use symbolic execution to track the states and we will declare symbolic variable as state variable. Now let's consider a flow diagram here. We have state one. We have state two, and finally we have state three. And if they are linearly executed, it's all good because we'll be able to recover it quite easily. But there's an issue here. If there's a condition somewhere to check for two different states, we need to be extra careful in this case. Let's say at state 3, it deviates towards state 4 and state 5. That's going to be an issue and we need to be careful about that. So let's see how a sub-dispatcher actually implements a conditional jump in Emotet. So this is how it exactly implements it. It does it by using something known as branchless jumps. So in this example, we have a mathematical action used for branchless jumps. The state variable would have one of these values. To patch the jump, we'll have to calculate both the states and associate one of them with a jump to zero opcode and the other one with a direct jump, as you can see in the patch code over here. So the final steps for deobfuscating the control flow involves patching. We have to patch all sub dispatchers towards their next destination. We have to knob all sub dispatcher code because we don't want noise in the binary code, right? And then finally, we have to patch main dispatcher with a direct jump to the first state. Now, if we combine it all together and try to put it in a script, this is what we'll get. We'll be able to recover the control flow. Thank you very much for watching the video and hit that subscribe button.